guys, welcome to Box for Box Football, and we're back with the what? The, uh, what did we call it last time? The best player series or best position series? I don't know. You guys give it a, um, a name, right? You guys let us know. Pop like like pop a name down. But last time we spoke about goalkeepers. This time we're going to speak about right backs, and today we're going to look at who are the best right backs in the world, greatest right backs of all time. My bad. In the draft system, so. I go, Jack goes. I go, Jack goes. And then, uh, like at the end, you guys debate on who had, um, on who had the best list. But Jack has a question for me to see who is going to have the first pick. So Lionel Messi wore the number thirty shirt at the start of his Barcelona career, and obviously mm-hmm. now infamously wears number ten. Eighteen. What other, what other number has he worn for the club? Nineteen. Nineteen. Correct. Nice, nice. Well played, well played. Very nice. So, James, you take the first pick. I, I didn't even want the first pick because I think my number one right back of all time is going to be different from yours. So, I think I'm going to get mine anyway. Yeah, I I, um, I think it is. The other guys, could you also comment down harder questions for Jack to um, answer what? me? Because I, 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 it just feels like every time I do this... I, can it. I just tell you, I wouldn't have gotten that. I'm just putting that out there. That's not one I'd have gotten. Okay, next time I'm going to um, ask you a question. So I'm going to start off first. Um, my number one right back, in my opinion, the greatest right back ever in my eyes is Philipp Lahm of Bayern Munich and Germany. Now, I also played for Stuttgart at the time. When I think about a right back, especially modern day, you, you, like, you think about them going forward and, you, you know, creating chances. Philipp Lahm, to me, is almost the perfect right back in that, yes, he gets forward and scores goals, but defensively, he's one of the best. Now, when Pep Guardiola comes and calls you the most intelligent player he's ever coached, that's saying something. And this man has coached Xavi, Iniesta, Messi, Swansteiger, the lot. But if he says that you're the best one, that's saying something. Now, he doesn't have all the individual accolades to show for it, but when he's captain Germany to a World Cup, captain uh, Bayern Munich to um, a Champions League and won eight Bundesliga titles, just so, I want to say dominant, but just so consistent throughout his whole time. I've never seen him had a bad game. I generally, I've watched Philip Lamb so many times, I can't remember, talk, I can't remember one time I thought, wow, Philip Lamb wasn't really on it today. And he was so good to a point that he played left back. And then sometimes he may even drop into centre back and then come to the end of his career, he dropped into the midfield and was really good there and won the best. You know, and here's a guy who's just so well all-rounded He's one of my favourites to watch, Philip Lahm, as my number one. I didn't think you'd go there. I'm just putting that out there. The reason why I didn't really mind you getting the question is I thought you'd go somewhere else, but you did take my number one. Um, yeah, uh, seven out of ten is probably his worst game. Um, position versatility, um, good in kind of training sessions, hard worker, a proper, proper professional, um, leadership, uh, doesn't really have a mistake in him as well. Good off the field in terms of his character. The only mistake I, like, I remember from was the Euro 2008 final against Spain, Torres' goal. You could say he got caught out for that, but try that. <laughs> we'll we'll let him off. So this is my kind of player. Um, he can actually defend as fullback too. So, James, I totally agree with you there. And I'm, I'm glad that you, you've taken my, my guy away from me there. Um, so my number one pick, I am going to have to settle for my number two overall pick. Uh, that's Danny Alves. Um, this is the most decorated footballer of all time. Um, this is one of the most important, well, maybe not the most, but the second or third most important piece to the greatest club side of all time. And that Barcelona team that Danny Alves played a part of. Um, unreal for Brazil. Such a good attacking threat. A leader, uh, determined, aggressive everything you would really want out of a modern day fullback and I think largely speaking a lot of the younger guys who, who've come through um, largely modelled their game uh, off of Danny Alves and all that he, he has achieved everywhere he goes he wins trophies now I wouldn't be Jack Farr if I didn't say that largely that's because he went to really good teams who were expected to win it wasn't the fact that he single-handedly took over but I know that if you're talking about the best of the best, you want a player who can make an attacking difference from fullback. It's such an important position for the top, top teams. Danny Alves, most decorated footballer of all time, has to be my number one pick for best right back of all time. 
it's still no World Cups, you know. He's, he, he's, he is the most decorated, but again, probably, he was definitely in my list. I think Daniel Alves is one of the greatest we've ever seen. He's such a such top, top player. Yeah. Brilliant pick there, unlucky. I, I, I wish I had him, but we're going to stay in Brazil. And we're going to, I'm going to go for the guy who I believe made being a fullback and, a, and, a, and especially a right back feel, feel sexy. And I'm going to go for Cafu. Now, yeah. here's a guy who's won two World Cups, um, played in three World Cup finals, captain, um, um, captain Brazil to the 2002 World Cup, uh, played for Roma and was also able to join AC Milan and also be a great player there. So for you to go to these two great clubs, especially uh, he joined Roma at the age of 27. And he mm-hmm. still had time to play for AC Milan and had a great time there and be a part of the, this world class backline, um, unlike we were able to see. When I think of um, Cafu, I just think of moments. I remember mean, there was a moment in like the Roma shirt where he had like three to four players around him and he just pop over one head, pop over the other one, head away, and then dribble off with it. Just a brilliant footballer to watch. Going forward was absolutely brilliant. As I said, he made playing as a, a right back feels sexy when you think of uh, when you think of a modern day fullback uh, if you think of a player in the past who, who, who can become a modern day fullback Cafu is just number one player that you, you would pick yeah proper proper player um, he's my number three so James has taken my number one and my number three so we're going That's just so to, just according to plan right now um, but yeah like I think you look at somebody like Danny Alves, and it was close for me with Cafu and Danny Alves. I think Cafu could have played literally anywhere on the field, uh, whereas yeah. somebody like Danny Alves is kind of, you feel like, restricted to the flanks a little bit. So one kind of rub for Cafu that you have there. But yeah, just total, just oozes class, unreal player. Um, so coming on to uh, coming on to my second round pick, uh, I'm taking, uh, I believe, I want to check this. I want to make sure I'm not getting this wrong, but the most capped France player of all time. Oh, uh, my day. Lillian, Lillian Duran. Um, yeah, absolute beast. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Reliable. Um, played, played for Barcelona, Juventus, uh, for some brilliant uh, French teams over the years. Just looking at some of his honours here. Um, two-time Serie A champion uh, at, uh, at Juventus. Uh, World Cup winner in 98. Um, European Championship in 2000. French Player of the Year in 97. Um, I'm looking at some other stuff here. Uh, World 11 nominations here too. Uh, Ballon d'Or Dream Team nominations here as well. Just, just such a solid, um, solid, solid player uh, at fullback at a time where I think the position was kind of changing, um, and you were going from this kind of uh, Philip Lahm esque type of fullback where it was more about um, being solid defensively and just kind of playing it safe to the more risky Dani Alves style of fullback that we see more more in the modern day here. And Turam had a had uh, had a little bit of both. Um, yeah, that that that's that's my number two overall pick. I'm I'm still kind of reeling from the fact that James went one, I went two, then James went. You know, I've got four, but Lillian Turam was my second pick. He was he was literally like my third to fourth pick, and you yeah. feel kind of doing everything for me right now because I don't really know what to do. But my third and final pick is going to be. Tough one here, but I'm going to go for another Brazilian. Brazil, they just generally seem to produce the best full-backs in, rather, rather if you're looking at left-back or right-back, they like they produce the best. And I'm going to go for World Cup winning captain, Carlos Alberto. Now, I'm not going to come here and say that I know so much about him as a player that I've watched him, but I've, but, but I've seen clips. And when you are uh, part of, of what a lot of people can, can, um, consider to be the Brazil 1970 team to be the greatest team of all time. For you to captain them says um, 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 says something as you as a player, and especially to score arguably the greatest football goal of all time. You remember Pele picks up the ball, doesn't even look, pops in the Carlos Alberto, making um, um, making a big dash and smashes it into the bottom corner. I think I think that was voted the greatest goal of all time by FIFA. Right. At the time, what can we say about him? Also played for Santos and um, and Flamengo. Had a bit of a stint in New York Cosmos. I don't know why players seem to do that. Seem to go to New York Cosmos and join all the top players: George Best, Pele. They all money, 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 money. But <laughs> as a fullback, like when you look at uh, 
a lot of people looking up to fullbacks, he will probably be the number one for a, a lot of maybe not our era, but a lot of maybe the uh, seven uh, in the seventies, nineties, and eighties. Yeah, can't disagree with you. He was my number six, so you have left me my number five, which I'm really appreciative of. Um, my one oh, criticism, yeah. of Carlos Carlos Alberto, uh, no European football. Uh, that that to me. You're never really, in my opinion, going to be tested to the top level unless you do it in Europe and you succeed in Europe. Not not dismissing the quality of the player. He was my number six pick. I'm, he's amazing. Look at what he did for Brazil. Um, but just one thing for me where I'm like, ah, if you play all your time here, I just don't know, you know. That's, um, that was my biggest argument, like, like where I had to rank him. But me looking at his overall career, and especially at that time, the best players all were, were playing um, in the Brazilian league. So, yeah, yeah. number three, Carlos Alberto. Um, so I, I have my number five. Uh, instead of going, uh, what was it, two, four, six, I'm going to go two, four, five, which I'm really happy about. Um, see if you, you can figure out who it is. I'm sure you can. A total of 714 uh, club appearances, 143 national team uh, representations, played well into his, um, played football well into his uh, 40s. Um, Javier Zanetti. Uh, I just oh, don't know what else you can say. Uh, part of the generation of, um, of players I remember doing, uh, I did a paper on this at university. Um, there was lots of uh, migration uh, between Italy and Argentina. Um, so a lot, of, um, a lot of Argentinian players, if you think about the names, you go, oh, it actually sounds kind of Italian. It's because a lot of Italians uh, went to Argentina and Argentinians to, uh, to Italy. Um, but Javier Zanetti, um, who, you might, who you might think is an Italian international, is actually still Argentinian. Um, just read off some of his accomplishments here. One, two, three, four, five Serie A titles with Inter Milan, several cups, um, uh, Club World Cup in there as well, Champions League winner, of course, with, uh, with Jose Mourinho, um, countless Team of the Year um, awards with uh, FIFA Pro and, and, and FIFA and all of those. Um, yeah, Inter Milan Hall of Fame, club legend uh, for Inter. Um, Similar in the mould of somebody kind of like a Maldini, a little bit more maybe reserved, maybe a little more like Lam, just doesn't really have a mistake in him. Won't won't really do anything that I think will, will shock you um, defensively, like kind of a big crunching tackle or a massive header or something. But the mentality and the brain of a footballer is so settled in there for Zanetti. You see late in his career, he moved to midfield, um, was obviously captain a, a bunch uh, during his time into Milan as well, a true leader. And I think, like I say, just for me personally, um, the one kind of uh, red herring in, in, in my list of choices is Danny Alves. My type of fullback is the more Philip Lahm, the more Javier Zanetti type. Uh, steady, you know, steady, especially if you're defending against one of the most uh, explosive players on the pitch, uh, the opposition wingers. You want to make sure defensively you're a steady hand and then going forward you're smart, solid and, and you can figure the game out. So my final pick, I'm happy he's still on the board, uh, Javier Zanetti. Well, guys, we have uh, six altogether, uh, three each. Now, if you disagree, there's so many, so many world-class and legendary fullbacks that we've left off this list. Tell me what you think. We're going to need some honourable mention down there because I'm not really great at, at, at like, pronouncing one, half these names. <laughs> one, one thing I will say, um, a lot of the greatest of all time right backs are playing football right now. Um, there's been such an explosion in the fullback position of, of talented players over the last five years or so that names like, we talked about it, James, Joshua Kimmich, Trent Alexander Arnold, Akraf Hakimi, uh, Alfonso Davies, all these guys, it's, you know, we're just getting in the early part of their career. They could well be on this list in 10 years' time. Tell me, guys, what do you think? Do you agree with Jack? Do you agree with our list? Comment down below. Thank you for watching. This is Box Box Football, and we will see you next time.